All right. Uh, uh, today uh, we have uh, our uh, second applied math seminar at the University of Texas Pan American. Uh, today uh, our uh, uh, professor uh, Karen Yagjian will give a talk, and the title of the talk is "The Klein Golden Equivalence in the Curved Space Time of the Expanding Universe." Uh, I think it might be uh, related to the uh, gravitational wave, which is a hot topic. Uh, just uh, recently. Okay, uh, welcome, uh, uh, Professor Chuck. First of all, <coughs> thank you very much for the invitation to give a talk in this seminar. And and uh, I see um, many students, and I'm very happy to have them, and I will try to make it as uh, simple as possible, but no more. And outline of my talk, it will contain different topics. Uh, and uh, the Sitter model of universe and Klein-Gordon equation, Higgins principle, Ehrenfeld equation. I will not touch this one. But all these uh, topics you can connect with just one thing, which is explicit formula for solutions. And <coughs> This is outline of the talk. I will also speak about some uh, integral transformation and about representation formulas. And let me start with Ehrenfest question. Paul Ehrenfest is a he was physicist quite well known with his contribution in theoretical physics, in statistical physics, in quantum mechanics in the beginning of last century. And he published a paper. Uh, this paper is in 1918, but it, essentially it was done in 1917. And the title is here In what way does it become manifest in the fundamental laws of physics that space has three dimensions? What we teach our students is in calculus 3, x, y, z, three-dimensional space. And so he raised this question. And this is very old uh, paper, 100 years old almost. And let me uh, just print it in new fonts, because it's difficult to read this one. And so uh, what was it? It was published in. Amsterdam, Proceeding Solar Academy. And uh, what has our space just three dimensions? Or in other way, by which singular characteristic do geometries and physics in RT distinguish themselves from those in, order, in other RNs? Why it's three so important? And he himself right, that uh, when we put in this way the questions have perhaps no sense. And <coughs> uh, indeed, uh, and, and then he rephrases this uh, question in many different ways. And then also, what is meant by physics of R4 or R7? and why they are different, and what is exceptional property of R3. And then he writes, he wrote that I will not try to find a better form for, for these questions. Perhaps others will succeed in indicating some more singular properties of R3, and then it will become clear to what are the justified questions to which our considerations are fit answers. And if you put in, uh, if you put in Google, why space has three dimensions, then you will get to a twenty thousand, uh, not answers, but some <laughs> publications. I don't know how many answers exist, but I will try today to give something which 
it cannot be answered, but it's very closely related to uh, this question. And then uh, what he did in that paper, he discussed three different phenomena uh, known at that time in the beginning of last century. And more precisely, he uh, discussed, so let me show, first, gravitation and planetary motion uh, based on Newt Newtonian uh, gravity. And then next, electromagnetic field, which essentially is light. And then also, uh, Huygens principle. So these three topics, he, uh, he discussed and he has shown that for these three laws, dimension three is essential. But it wasn't answered because in some sense, they are completely uh, independent laws, these uh, independent uh, rules for gravitation, electromagnetic light, and Huygens principle at that time. And let me go back. That question was raised in 17. And what is interesting that, and you know that in uh, 1915, Einstein uh, suggested his general relativity, which is about uh, gravitation. Then approximately the same days, De Sitter suggested his model of universe. And then let us discuss this gravitational part. And his discussion by Ehrenfest was based on Newtonian mechanics. He considered the planetary motion and he discovered that, uh, for example, uh, what is the difference between R3 and Rn if n is greater than 3? Then there is, uh, there do not exist motion compatible with the elliptic motion in R3. All trajectories have the character of spirals. And so I don't want to go into details, but uh, uh, but he compared uh, case of R2 and Rn greater than 3, and then he discovered that motion of planets will be completely different, and therefore R3 is, dimension 3 is so important. And so again, we have three different laws of, of physics, and let me start with Huygens principle, very old one from these three. Uh, Huygens, principle, Huygens was a physicist who suggested the following mechanism for propagation of waves. He said that if you have some source of uh, wave, wave can be sound, it can be electromagnetic wave, then what happens? When it propagates and when wave reaches any point on the uh, any point, then that point became a source of new spherical waves. And when you add all these waves, you get a new front, and then you start also on this front, such spheres, and then new front, and this is a mechanics of propagation of waves. Uh, propagation, reflection, and so on. All these uh, what we know from everyday life about waves, sound waves or electromagnetic waves. And let me go in more details, but oh, this works. Like this one. If you have sound wave, let's try again. Uh, when wave propagates here, we, we don't have wave, but we have wait for some time, and then again it disappears. And this is, this is uh, what is called Huygens principle. That means in some point we have uh, some sound, and then sound disappeared after some time. 
it does not stay there for forever. And I will show more mathematically how it looks when we use when we use explicit formulas for solutions. And mathematically, Huygens' principle is the following. Uh, some differential equation, partial differential equation, is said to satisfy Huygens' principle if solution vanishes at all points which cannot be reached from the initial data by a null geodesics. I will explain more in more simple terms this phenomenon because geodesics, they mean uh, in four dimensional case when you add to x, y, z also time. And an example equation which satisfies Huygens' principle is just wave equation. And it turns out that it holds that Huygens' principle only if dimension n or uh, spatial variables is odd number and greater than three. For even numbers, there is no Huygens principle. And I will explain a little, bit, a little bit more in detail this by formula. But uh, they say that operator is a Huygens operator if if it satisfies his Huygens principle, if solutions to Cauchy problems satisfies Huygens principle. And of course, if you have some operator which satisfies Huygens principle, you can just make a change of variables from x to some other variable y. And then to get a new operator with still Huygens principle. You can make more different changes of equation like here first one, when we uh, change independent variables or we change uh, unknown functions operator by these transformations, just play with operator. And in the beginning of, uh, in 30s of last century, uh, Hadamar uh, suggested conjecture that every Huygens operator is trivial, that is it can be uh, it can be obtained by these three operations, simple manipulations from the wave equation. It was so-called Hadamard conjecture. And then a lot of publications around this. And finally, it was disproved in 1965 by German mathematician Paul Günther. But still, there are a lot of open problems related to this Huygens principle. And let me start now more simple explanation of Huygens principle. So let, uh, let lo let's look at this uh, simplest equation, what we teach students. This is <coughs> string equation, one dimensional x, Cauchy problem, that means we have initial data, phi 0, phi 1, and we know solution. Solution is given in this form. Now suppose that uh, phi zero has a support inside of some, phi zero has a support inside of some, uh, sorry, this is a good marker. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, and then it's something like this, function with support. Uh, inside of interval from negative a to a at time zero. And then we want to see, and second condition, let us set zero, then this disappears, and we have very simple formula for solution. It shows us that what happens to solution is the following. At time, if now I take time is, for example, five, then solution will look like this. Here and here, it's different from zero. And everywhere else, it vanishes. And then if I take t 
is greater than 5 and so on. So it propagates in time. And pay attention. What happens to point here? When wave propagates at this, po at this point, we have some uh, non-zero value. And then after some time, it still became zero. And here, we don't have any perturbation. And let me show you. Let me show you how it looks like if we use. So what happens initially, we have non-zero, and then it propagates at this point. Or at this point, it was zero, and then it became different from zero, and then it vanishes. And so there is no uh, no sound, no wave, if you wait for a long time. And this is about a wave equation in one dimensional case, which in fact does not satisfy Huygens principle. Why? Because of this second part. Because of this second function. If we set first function 0 and take any function phi 1, which is non 0, also in supporting some interval, time interval, then what happens? Even if we, if we wait for a long time, so here we have by one different from zero, a time is zero, then it will <laughs> propagate in this way and solution will be non zero in all this area. And it will of course it will be smaller and smaller in time. Sorry for this uh, non perfect picture. But still, it will never in, be in the rest any point in x. Any point when we have here some non-zero solution, then forever it will be different from zero. So we see that there is no Huygens. Uh, Huygens principle is not satisfied for dimension one because of this second term, and therefore. Uh, this is exceptional case, n is 1. And next, if we look at n is 3, what happens in this case? If we take first initial data 0, second from different from 0, formula, this formula is from textbook. And you see that integration is over, integration is over a sphere. of radius t. And so if you have here some uh, source of uh, sound, then if you look and if this is source and this is v, then initially there will be 0. It will be 0 until uh, it's better to write from this, until sounds reach this point, and then after some time, it sometimes it also will be zero. Because in this formula, it's a sphere, it's not a ball. And so if t is large enough and phi has a compact support, then we will get, as a result, zero. So the first, at some point, there is no wave, then for some uh, time later. There is a wave, but eventually, again, solution is zero. This is a basic property of R3, and fortunately, this is true for R3. Otherwise, we will always hear something in our errors. So, how about R2? In R2, integration is over a disk, two dimensional disk. And therefore, when you integrate over disk, then uh, here is source. Here we are here. Then 
we essentially integrate over disk, which involves also a source. And therefore, integral in general is different from zero. It never vanishes. So this is two formulas, shows that Huygens principle holds for R3 and not for R2. Then if we try similar things for Rn, then for n is odd. We have also integration over sphere. Then again, there is Huygens principle. If n is even, we have integration over uh, ball, and there is no Huygens principle. And these formulas are well known for many years, and this is a base to check Huygens principle for these uh, dimensions. For wave equation, pay attention. We have a wave equation, simplest equation. And if you know the uh, distribution theory, then a fundamental solution, if you look for fundamental solution, then it's more clear that it has delta function. And it's different from zero only if t is uh, equal to absolute value of x. While for n is 2, it contains heavy side function, which is different from zero if argument is positive. Always is different from zero. And the, yes, please. What is the distribution now? No. So the question no, is just. To it's no, there is no decay term. No, no decay term. It's just a wave equation. Which equation? Decay term. Only this partial and the evolution. No dissipation. No dissipation. Why come to rest or not come to rest? No. That is a curious principle. It comes to rest if dimension is 3 or odd now. And it never come to rest if I Because of summation? Be because of formula, yes. And third formula contains integration of the sphere, this is one thing. And integration of the ball, another thing. That is the point. If you integrate over sphere, then after some time, sphere is too big, radius, and it missed our point. No. And then integral is zero. No. If you take away the ball, then it's always any, any physical laws should not depend on the dimension. That is the question for is it right by Eric Fix. That why the dimension idea. n is 3 is important. Should not depend on dimension. No, physical law must depend on dimension. That is answer. That's the historical very important point. Yeah. Yes. Newton rated, Kepler rated, then Hadamard rated, and so on. Yeah. And then everything is formulated like a situation. <coughs> now, now it's quite interesting. I think you are talking about it here. Now, I like it. Yeah. Now I will discuss also. We need flank Gordon equation, and uh, flank Gordon equation is very similar to wave equation, just one additional term. But what is important is that I will discuss is. Plan Gordon equation in curved pseudo Riemannian Riemannian manifold. And why? Why we need? So uh, you know there is a Minkowski space time uh, when uh, it's uh, flat. They say curvature is zero. But recently it was discovered that universe is expanding, and you know. It's already proved by experiment. And so they suggested several models of universe, expanding universe, and they all lead to non Riemannian manifolds, uh, non, uh, non flat manifolds with non zero curvature. And one of such models is the Sitter model. I will show you a little bit later. but at least since the universe is uh, exp expanding, we need equation in curved pseudo Riemannian manifold. And I will discuss Klein Gordon equation in such manifold. And more precisely, in the Sitter model of universe. And the second one I will not discuss. 
And so what is the point? Point is that before what we know, uh, we knew only very few explicit formulas for solution of Cauchy problem for partial differential equations. And especially for this the Sitter model of the universe, such formula was not known. And if you, and then I will show that formula, in fact, later, if you have an explicit formula, then you can check properties. Explicit formula for wave equation, we can check properties of Huygens principle, and so many properties. Explicit formula for any other equation gives you a test to check properties of solutions. And what is the space-time? The space-time is space-time space -time where in front of this uh, special time of metric, we have a function which depends on time. And this function is increasing function exponentially. And it shows that if we have two points and we measure distance between two points, in the space to any object in the universe, if we uh, check a distance, the distance is increasing with so quickly. And this is the reason why it's expanding. But h is very small number, in fact. It's a so-called Hubble constant. And mathematically, of course, we said this is the uh, speed of light, h is uh, Hubble constant, we set them 1. Y yes, please. How does that metric differ from the Einstein metric? Uh, Einstein this is... Metric. Uh, is that some equal to 2 AC? Einstein metric? I don't know. Einstein and it's very important metric also. Yeah. Because it's the whole, the associated. So I don't know what you call Einstein. But I'm talking about that 2 to the AC term. Uh, in the case of Minkowski space time, we have you one, 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 one. In the case of De Sitter, we have here these functions. You know what I'm talking about, the Einstein metric. It's very similar, uh, except that time. I, know I don't remember now. I know Einstein De Sitter metric, which is different from this, but it has the same, behavior, very similar behavior. And there is the center, there is Einstein. No, this is similar because look at the star depends on time. Yes. 2 HT. The metric can be used by 2 HT. T is the time. You mean here? Right, right. Totally different. Uh, I don't know what you call Einstein metric. There is Einstein the center. The Einstein metric has only time dependent on first time. Here, what the H is moving. Uh, <coughs> they have time. In 4 over 3. Instead of the initial function, in the case of Einstein, the sitter is written t in 4 over 3. But this is other story. Let me continue. And so this is an example of of metric which depends on time. It's a non-flat. It's a constant curvature, in fact. And how it looks like Uh, Klein Gordon equation in that metric. In general metric, so called covariant Klein Gordon equation is this. G is a metric tensor, phi is a function what we are looking for, m is physical mass of particle, and uh, v is potential which characterizes self interaction of particles. This is what we got from physics. And now let us look how we can write it in the sitter case. In the case of the sitter space time, we get additionally two wave equation. Wave equation does not have this one, does not have this one, and does not have this one, but Lang Gordon equation has this term in the space of Minkowski space time, there is no these additional functions. And so this is how it looks like this Klein Gordon equation in the De Sitter space time. It has uh, 
uh, it's a partial differential equation, hyperbolic equation. Therefore, we can try to solve Cauchy problem for that equation and try to find formula for solution. Then formula will tell us what uh, properties of solution. Again, here we have uh, Hubble constant. This is Planck constant. This is physical mass. This is a uh, light, a speed of light. And importance of klein gordon equation comes from physics. I, on dimension n. On, well, on, on dimension. It depends, of course. This is important. We will see later how it depends. And if by we said all is one, in mathematics we do it usually, then here we have n, which is dimension of space. And then, of course, equation of explicit solution of Cauchy problem for this partial differential equation. Formula like we had before, so-called D'Alembert, Kirchhoff formula, then you know, of course, Poisson formula, every these formulas you know from textbooks. And now how to write down solution to equation, Klein-Gordon equation in the case of curved space-time. In the case when we have here additional term which depends on time and additional this term. And the approach what, uh, was suggested to solve this problem. So, it's linear. It's linear. not. Uh, f first, let us consider linear. We said this zero. This is self-interactive part. Then we said it zero is still linear. Linear does mean it's simple because when you have variable coefficient, then it's very difficult to solve it. And so this is one of cases when it turns out it's possible to solve explicitly. And how to solve? To solve that equation, let us uh, try it, uh, try to write solution via some integral transform. And what is written here? Integral transform, which gives us a solution of Cauchy problem for that equation, it consists of two steps. First step, solve, solve this problem. This problem is uh, from textbook. You can take these formulas where you put right hand side with parameter tau, then put that solution in, uh, in this formula. And the question is, what is k? How to find right k to get a solution of? Sorry? Kern kernel, I will show kernel. That is the uh, most interesting part. To write a kernel which uh, provides you solution. To find that kernel is the most uh, difficult part, of course. And what is written here? Here we have function phi, which depends uh, on propagation. And in fact, it's a distance function. I don't want to go into details because it's quite uh, technical. And it turns out that such transform provides formulas for several equations, PD equations, which, which, are, which looks independent from each other, like Trincomi equation or the sitter plan gordon equation in the sitter space time and some other equations. And now I suggest kernel. Kernel for the sitter space time contains this function. And uh, so here we have Gauss hypergeometric function. Then what else we have? This comes from the the sitter metric. And what else here? We have variable z, t, 0, b, they are here. So it's uh, quite, uh, on one side it's simple. On the other side, it contains hypergeometric function, which involves all, all difficulties. And then by this function, let us calculate k0, k1. And now, now answer how it looks like solution to this problem. 
this is PD. Here we have variable coefficient. It's a Cauchy problem, initial data. And then this is explicit formula for solution. Why it's explicit? It looks maybe not so simple, but it's explicit because K0, K1, I already uh, we have on the previous slide. And this function V, we can take from any textbook solutions of this uh, Cauchy problem for wave equation. And so now we have explicit formula for solution. And, uh, but pay attention. Here, there is no term with dimension n. And if you remember, we have to write n u t. And uh, in previous equation, we have it. But it turns out we can get rid of this term by simple transformation. And just keep one term in front of you. We cannot touch this term. We cannot, by manipulations, it uh, make more simple. But if we have this covariant, so previous equation is non-covariant equation. And this is covariant equation, what we get from a metric. By this simple transformation, it can be reduced to this one with new coefficient of u. And forget this right-hand side. It comes from no linear term. It's not important. And then we have different cases for, for mass. Uh, physical mass of particle for dimension, we got some relation between these two terms. Because if mass is large enough, or mass is exactly equal to this one, or mass is smaller than, we have here different sign of uh, coefficient, and then formula will be completely different. <laughs> And rest mass, what's the difference? Uh, this is M is rest, is rest mass. It's rest, rest mass. If you want in special relativity, it's rest mass. And no, no. In, in equation, I know, that's, that's quite in a different equation. But normally, equation of any physical equation, m comes at just m1, but not m squared. This is something different. It's from plane of the equation. And also, this is m squared minus m squared by 2. This is important term. It comes from covariant equation. Now we see a dimension. And mass depends on the dimension. It's not physical mass. Physical mass is m, this one. This is the physical mass. This is dimension. We combine this just for mathematical uh, simplicity to write down solution. But because of mathematics, we have to take square root of this. And then if it's positive, it's real. If it's negative, it's imaginary. And then behavior the kernel will be completely different. That is the point. Look, look at this function. If you have m, uh, pure imaginary or real behavior of these functions is completely different. And that is a point why we have to compare this uh, dimension and physical mass. And any case, in any case, we have still formulas for this equation, for this equation, or for this equation. They are slightly different, but we have formulas. And then we can make a test for Huygens principle for this equation. And but what is important, let's just look at the kernel. This is kernel what we got in in solution. And of course we want to make it as simple as possible. Right? And what is the difficult part here? Difficult part is uh, Gauss function, hyperbolic function. And in mathematics, it's known that Gauss hypergeometric hyper function can be simplified to polynomial case. If parameter, if this parameter is negative integer number. 
then it's just a polynomial. It's a mathematical, pure mathematical fact. What does it show for, uh, for physics? Let us, first of all, call these points for n. When we have here negative integer numbers, let us call them not points. So we have equation. This m is uh, just so-called curved mass. And for physical mass, equation is this one. So again, we have here physical mass, dimension, and here's some k, which can be any integer number. Not number, not points. And now let us check how many po not points they have different dimensions. For dimension 1 and 2, we have only one not point. For dimension 3, we have two not points, 0 and square root of 2. So what we got? We just, from pure mathematical formula or solution, we got some points. And it turns out that in theoretical physics, this point is very important. It's called Higuchi bound. I will not stop and uh, on this Higuchi bound, but so we got two, uh, for n is 3, we got two cases when formula can be simplified. Mass is 0, physical mass, and physical mass equals to this number. What is physical mean? It, it is physical mass. What, what does it mean, mass? I don't know. Physical mass. <laughs> in the scope of which theory you are, in the scope of Newtonian mechanics, or in scope of special relativity, or in scope of general relativity, or in scope of classical field theory, or in scope of quantum field theory, mass has many meanings. So mathematical, this is fine. But my question is, do you have any particle whose mass is square root of two? Any particle discovered? That is a question. That is a huge about. That is a good question. But a uh, point is that Higuchi got his bound for particle of spin 2. Particles, they have spin, you know. And so far, physicists, they don't have particle with spin 2. So far, they didn't observe such particle, with spin 2 particle. This is what we have from experiment. But still, it's important point. Maybe in the future they will found Higuchi, this such particle. Spin 2 particle is only gra gra gravitational, uh, graviton. And also graviton, just recently they observed gravi uh, gravitational waves. So this is... Mass is mass, charge, charge is charge. charge. Charge is different from... Massless particle. Massless, no mass. Massless. So, we got some points. And then let us go back to Huygens' principle. This is some uh, result about Huygens' principle that, uh, that the only not point if mass equals to this number allows this equation to be Huygensian uh, equation, to satisfy Huygens' principle. And dimension must be greater than 3 odd number. OK, so answer is the following. That equation satisfy Huygens' principle if mass equals to this number. This is, uh, this is, if we put here n is 3, we got, we get 9 minus 1 is 8, and then we will get exactly Higuchi bound. Only if mass is equals to Higuchi bound, 
And if dimension is odd number greater than three, then this equation satisfies Huygens principle. That is uh, about Huygens principle. But still, is just one uh, mass, one number. And uh, then let me go back to this uh, D'Alembert formula, Kirchhoff formula, and Poisson formula. Uh, what is wrong about n is 1? For n is 1, n2, n3, this odd, then even. If you remember, I started with n is 1, and I show that there is no Huygens principle. For phi 0 is phi 1 is 0 initial data we have but we have to set it 0 the phi uh, 0 so here no Huygens principle here there is no Huygens principle here there is Huygens principle but what is wrong with this because this is also odd number why all odd dimensions satisfy Huygens principle <coughs> <laughs> Zero, no, no, PAD, no PDA, no partial differential equation in the case of zero. But, and no formula, but uh, and no Huygens principle. So my question was, what is wrong about n is one? Because all odd numbers, they satisfy. This one doesn't satisfy. And it turns out that it's wrong with all these numbers. Something is wrong for all these odd numbers. This is quite good uh, dimension. If, and we can unify all of them, if we slightly change Huygens principle. And what I suggest, that instead of Huygens principle, let us consider so-called incomplete Huygens principle. That means set second condition, second function in Cauchy problem zero, and then check Huygens principle. If you accept this definition, then this n, like any odd numbers, will satisfy this incomplete Huygens principle. And then we can prove the following theory. That if we look at Klein-Gordon equation, in all possible dimensions. And if we exclude cases when Huygens principle are valid, then it turns out that incomplete Huygens principle works only if mass is zero and dimension is one or three. One or three. So for Huygens principle, we have M Higuchi. Uh, for Huygens principle, we have M must be Higuchi bound for not square root only for N is three. Higuchi bound. But for and N is three. But if we slightly relax this Huygens principle in this way, then it can be mass zero and dimension one or three. And now we got second mass, zero mass. We have Higuchi mass and then zero mass. And from this theorem, from this theorem and previous theorem, we can obtain the following theorem, following uh, corollary. If we have two equations with two different masses, and if they both obey in complete Huygens principle, then dimension must be three. The only case when these two equations satisfy Huygens principle, then dimension must be three. That means exceptional dimension three. Some kind of answer why dimension of space is three we reduced is the following. If there are two particles which satisfy these equations, then 
they are different mass, then dimensions must be three. And mass we know, one mass must be zero, another mass must be this. Yes, and then the question is, what is this? This zero is light. And there exists light and it obeys uh, Huygens' principle. And what is this one? Gravity. Why? Because in equation we have only gravity and that's it. There is no any other reason for any other particle. And therefore, and gravity, graviton, it's very recently they say they found a gravitational wave. And I don't know how reliable so this. N minus one square. Now it's N square minus one. N minus one squared. Oh, that's N minus one, I think. No, like, no, no, that. Uh, go to the next one. Previous one. This one. No, that's N square minus one. I think you're right now. Uh, I can see it. N minus one square and then N square minus one. We have N square minus one. Yeah, N square. I think you're right. No, no, I can see it. N square minus one. I think you're right. Yes. <coughs> when n is one, that mass is zero. Mass is zero. Yeah. When n is one, mass is one of two. Then we have incomplete previous principle. Or dimension three. So if we accept there are two mass, two particles which obey this equation, one is mass zero, another mass square root of two. They both satisfies previous principle, then dimension of space must be three. No other choice. This is uh, mainly what I wanted to talk today about. And of course, proof is very long. It's published. You can check it. But idea of the proof is, of course, explicit formula for solution. And then, easy part, if you choose these two mass and dimension three, then it's easy to show that it satisfies Huygens' principle. Because it comes by very simple calculations from the form of solution. Difficult part, if you don't know uh, mass and dimension, but you have to prove that there is, uh, but you know there is a Huygens principle. That you have to prove that mass equals to something, dimension equals to something. Then what uh, I did, I just look at solution, some asymptotic uh, asymptotics for large time, and it turns out that a principal term of asymptotic is this one, and it must vanishes for all possible s. From this, we got conditions. This must be zero, this must be zero, and then conclusion is dimension must be three. So uh, just uh, just uh, outline, just basic idea how to prove it. But in details, it's, it's published. You can look at this. And so that's it. Thank you very much for your time. It's quite an interesting talk. I like it. I understand most of the talk. Mathematically, I have a problem. But physically, there are two, three questions I have. One is cosmological constant. Dirac is not alive. You never believe cosmological constant is constant. Your theory is still cosmological constant, right? Constant, a cosmological constant are constant. No, there are a lot of these different approaches in physics. Uh, there are point of view that cosmological constant is changing in time. But do you assume cosmological constant or constant? I assume that in this model, or this is a model, it is a constant. Uh, or dimension, about the dimension, the integer dimension, one, two, three, four, etc. No fractional dimension. Physically. No, no theory, problem. Uh, you, you can check a formula explicitly. Fraction, fraction of n. Maybe it works. I don't know. I didn't try. I don't know.
It's quite it's interesting. I like it. But what the is the, the directional dimension in the case? What is the, this uh, Laplace appearing to you? You have to specify and then to go into detail. And this comes from physics. I don't dispute with physics. I just take the question. Yes, I just have a question. It's specifically those two formulas. Is closer what you arrived at from the combination of all the other experience? Like, what is this formula? Is closer to closer waves? So, this waves, yes. Yeah. This is elementary particles. They is in quantum uh, mechanics. They are uh, for these particles. They write these equations, and then they give some meaning. So, when well, it's completely different story for physics, but, uh, I have no time to go into details. Did you do any work with delta with delta square? Del Martian? You mean here? No, not delta, but del Martian. Del Martian. Del -Martian. Ah, down here. Yeah. Square. Is there any work done on that? Uh, yeah. Other than the, uh, this is Laplace, yeah, right? You mean all these? No, no, I'm talking about delta. This Laplace yeah. square. But I'm talking about delta del square. The Dalamir is just yeah, right, right. ut right, right. minus. Anywhere down on that. You want square? Right. I didn't check it. Right. But it's step by step if you have to. If you just square, you can do it. No, I just no, it's a quite interesting talk. Yeah. I, yeah, I, but I just have a question about incomplete thinking. First of all, is that concept uh, proposed by you or by? Yes, very much. Nice. Okay. Uh, so, so the definition is if if the phi you, you say phi sub y is zero. Yes. Phase sub y is initial disturbance in the speed. speed. Initial speed. Initial speed. Yeah. Initial phi zero is initial uh, function. Just shape of initial function. Mm -hmm. This is shape of speed. Initial speed of function. I don't know. Uh, the point is that it's interesting. Uh, when you have constant coefficient case, it's enough. To check if phi zero zero phi one be the function, mm -hmm. because then you can reduce one case to another by differentiation, mm -hmm. and differentiation doesn't change the form of the function. Therefore, if there is a unit principle, it's still there, right? But not conversely. <coughs> Therefore, I said. So you said the initial speed is zero, but uh, later on it's not. Later on, it's solution of equation. Okay. Okay, so you have a special initial condition, the initial speed must be zero. In yes. the second time, it means the principle you call is incomplete. Yes, in then principle. you set it zero, then you, you then make n t1 and n3 cross in the same chain. I see. So all this, all this. Because that's accepted by the physics community for the incomplete. Uh, at least it, it's published in the yeah, Journal yeah, no, of Mathematical Physics. Yeah, yeah. So this is one. Okay. Uh -huh. I gave a talk in, for example, in Göttingen and also in other places. In Göttingen, physics <coughs> participate. I, I don't know if they accept or not. Let's see. Yeah. It's not a one day problem, yeah. not a one night problem. Mm -hmm. It's mathematically resolved after all. All right, uh, a wonderful talk and given by uh, Professor Yachty and uh, let's thanks our speaker again and uh, wrap up today's uh, talk. Mm -hmm.